Hi folks, um, this is uh, a follow-on from the uh, the video I did the other night, part two I guess. Um, I've had a lot of uh, very nice comments about the um, the uh, my attempts to um, mechanise or animate the uh, the landing gear, so thanks for those. Um, as you can see, uh, I've actually stripped it all down again. Um, I mentioned in the last video that uh, I was going to maybe have to replace these um, brackets uh, with aluminium. I bought some aluminium um, profile to do that with. Um, and then I had a second idea. Rather than strip everything completely out, um, I found some box section um, evergreen uh, it's like a sort of rectangular um, section uh, in uh, one of my uh, boxes, and I thought, well, there's enough of it. I could uh, I could make some braces for for these parts here. So um, what I've done, I bring that up a little bit closer, turn it so you can see it. Um, I've basically just glued them in and epoxied them uh, to the end here. And that's considerably stiffened that up. There's no movement in it at all now. Um, so, uh, I mean, if it, it, it doesn't look particularly neat, but um, I suppose if I was doing this uh, again, which, as I said, I don't, <laughs> don't plan on doing that. But um, if I was, I'd probably make some kind of custom part for this and then have it slot into place so it'd be a lot neater than this. But it does the job. Um, I've also put an extra skin of um, styrene over the face there because I want to recite the hole for the uh, the pivot. Um, and I've got some precise measurements now. I made some measurements based on what was there. And the, the leg that was folding up slower than the other three um there's a couple of reasons for that but one of them was that this the, the hole where it pivoted um here um was about a mil and a half different to the other three so at the time when i was putting it in i, I didn't think i'd need to be that precise but it, it it's slight you know sort of millimeter out makes all the difference so that's been taken out um on another note um these are the uh these are the pivot parts which uh, i stripped out now the other thing i did notice on these and i've corrected it now is that um if you're not familiar with um radio control parts which i'm i'm not particularly familiar with them um they come as um a threaded rod with these connectors on the end and uh, they have to be threaded on and you, you cut these to an approximate length and then tighten these on. Um, but ideally, if you've got four identical pieces, the distance between these two ends here should be the same. And again, on one of them, you can see if I put those up against each other there, they're now matching. Uh, but one of them was slightly out. So again, that's probably contributed to that not um, working properly um so um these are going to be fitted back in uh, i've also made sure that the connections from the servo are all um matching again so all the all the connections are the same so all being well when i get when i get it all back into place um the thing should certainly the, the legs should all move um at an equal uh, rate now rather than one lagging behind um, another thing i've found which i hadn't really thought about this until i uh, i took it apart and then i started looking at you know what's what's to happen next i mean the actual the actual mechanism if you see i've, I've mounted a um i put like a uh, a piece of that threaded rod into um a block that which which was glued to the the kit path there and you can see just by very slight movement there 
it, it throws the leg right out, which is fantastic. You know, it, it's great. Uh, and I've also adjusted it. I've put a, an extra stop inside so that when it reaches the point where these feet are flat in relation to the bottom of the ship, um, it stops. So it can't go beyond that point because the kit parts, if they're left as they are, can actually overextend. That's that's the maximum amount of travel of those legs now. Uh, they can't go beyond that, which if you build it as it comes straight out of the box, that, that's what can happen. Um, so, uh, you know, that, that's an improvement. Um, but the thing I've discovered is that um, you can see these very small tabs here, which are uh, the connectors for the uh, the shrouds uh, which cover the landing gear and they extend as the landing gear extends now playing around with the shrouds that's one of the shrouds there and they're mounted on the inside that they're, they're connected to that um, that piece that I've just shown you there by two pins and they've also got these tiny little hinged rods that go into these um, tubes here. Now, one thing I've discovered, and it, it, I don't know what the extent of the issue is going to be yet, because until this is painted, I can't really attach these. Um, and uh, I think that although they're pushed out by the leg as they deploy, when it comes in, back in again, there's nothing to pull them back in with the leg. And um, I'm assuming that when, when you do this manually, when you just have the kit where it's either, you know, um, legs, you know, extended or retracted, you're supposed to just push these in by hand. But obviously I don't want that happening because I want these to sort of fold out like this and then when the legs fold again to come back in. So I may have to come up with some kind of tether in here that as this, as this leg folds up, it actually drags this back in. Um, and it could be as simple as just attaching like a, a tiny little bit of, um, fishing line or maybe a piece of guitar string or something like that just to tether it to, to another part of this so that as it pulls in it also pulls this arm in as well um quite how that's going to work with these pieces in these two uh, these two little sort of piston things another thing occurred to me that i could actually run a cable down there and have it um sort of dragging it in um, another option is on the top, when I move those in and out, uh, where's my hand there? So if I bring that up to there, you can see that little piece sort of appearing and disappearing in that, uh, sort of ap aperture there. Uh, it's possible I might be able to put something in there and connect it to the mechanism. So the whole thing pulls in at the same time. I don't know. It's going to be another experiment. Uh, this whole thing's a, a bit of an experiment, but uh, I think it'd be worthwhile in the long run. But you know, ideally, I want to be able to have it so it looks like it does in the movie. So, um, bit of bit of lateral thinking needed there to try and figure that out. But I've got this far, so you know, I'm sure I can. I can come up with some uh, some way of doing it um, but any ideas that anyone else has got then uh, they're all gratefully received um, so not a huge amount of progress there in fact I've gone backwards but you know um, I'm going to reconnect all this soon so we'll see how it works then um, one other thing that I've done is um, I've printed um, the crew now, these have literally just been washed. Um, they, they've not been cured yet, so they're still a little tiny bit soft. Um, so I'll, uh, I'm going I'm to cure them um, and, uh, and clean them up, obviously. 
Um, now, I've, I've printed um, multiple sets here, uh, mainly because when I've done prints in the past, occasionally you'll get the odd um, part that's misshapen or um, doesn't form properly. Uh, but these have all come out perfect, so, um, you yeah, know, that's a good, uh, a good thing. Now, if I bring these up to the camera and I can get it to focus, um, the detail is very good on them. The faces are a little bit sort of undefined. Now, I don't know whether this is because uh, this these have been done in water washable resin, which I've switched to using for most things, mainly for convenience, because it's a lot easier uh, to wash the parts. Uh, you've still got to dispose of the, of the, the water that you've washed them in responsibly. You can't just empty it down the drain. But um, the I have noticed though on some finer detailed pieces that sometimes they're, they're not quite as sharp as the the standard resin, you know, the stuff that you clean up with um, isopropyl alcohol. So I've I've got some of the standard resin as well. So I may do another another print. The print only took I think it took two and a half hours. Um, but the detail is very good. But then I'm looking at it and thinking, well, how much are you going to see inside the cabin? Um, they're, um, the, uh, the pilots are probably the closest you're going to see. There's the two pilots there. And then you've got various stewardesses. You've got the seated one. You've got uh, the one carrying the, uh, the meal. Uh, there's another standing one there. Uh, so I, I think you probably end up using two stewardesses rather than all three. Uh, and then you've got Floyd sitting there eating his uh, eating his meal. Uh, he actually looks like he's playing a giant mouth organ. But um, it's, it's the bit where he's sort of drinking through the straws. So, it, I mean, you know, from what you're going to see through the window, then... Uh, I, th I think they're going to be adequate. I may, I may not bother reprinting them um, because the, the the details there. So um, I'll see what they like when they're cured, and then I'll uh, I'll I'll make a decision on that. Um, but overall, they're, they're really really good. Um, I just paid for the uh, the um, the file. Uh, I think I think it's listed on um, most of the groups on Facebook. Um, and um, obviously printed them off. Uh, I've also um, downloaded the files for the um, the Clavius base um, sort of miniature that was put up, and um, also the um, Tycho excavation um parts uh i've already got the files for the um the, the sort of photo shoot around the monolith uh I've, I've printed a set of figures up at uh 135th but um i'm thinking an ideal scale to do the full um scene you know with the with the dig and the 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 uh the sort of pit with the with the monolith in it be maybe this scale which is 148th so i may do another set of astronauts at 148th and then print off a load of parts to to, to make a, a scene for the for the dig um which would be uh quite uh quite nice you know it'd still be a decent size even at 148th because of the size of the the pit um so uh, i'll have a go at that but um yeah i'll get these uh i'll get these cured paint some up just to see what they're like, because obviously they're going to have to be installed prior to sealing the whole thing up. Um, and I'll get to work on the legs and uh, see where we go from there. That's about it, really, as an update. Um, everything else is pretty much as it was. And once I get the legs sorted out, I can start working on the rest of the, uh, the kit again and um, maybe start... Uh, putting it together okay so uh thanks for watching and uh, as i say any comments are welcome particularly about the um the mechanics of this uh 
of, of this mechanism and uh, much appreciated. Thanks.